Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here on location at Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2023. I'm John Furrier, your host, Dave Vellante's here. He's with the analyst, he's getting more content there. We have two great guests coming on theCUBE here to break down the generative AI wave from a technology platform perspective, infrastructure, and from an entrepreneurial perspective, as well as a venture capital. So we've got two great guests. We've got the entrepreneur and a VC in the same segment, two CUBE alumni, John Chirot's partner at Madrona, and Luis says CEO of OctoML, uh, both CUBE alumni. It's great to see you guys, thanks for coming on. Great to see you. Great so, you, actually your XM was on, John, so I should have said that you know a lot about <laughs> AWS being a leader and building products there. Now at Madrona, you're funding builders. Um, as I got a founder here, been on many times. So, so we're in a dynamic where you're already in market with some funding, you got some pretty good funding. It's raised, what, what, 800 million plus? Yeah, a little So you got, some, you got some good funding. Um, so you're in market, but now a new wave is coming in of the entrepreneurs. And then, you know, this reInvent really speaks volumes to this next wave of Gen AI. So you've been, you've been preparing for this, got the picks and shovels, you've been funding it. What's the current state right now? Because you have people in the market. Is there a, a line where if you're not in it a certain way or you're coming in, is there a table stakes um, to build successfully? What's the, what's the current appetite for that entrepreneurial readiness? Um, if you had to peg that, Luis, what would you say? The, the wow, there, there's, there's just so much. First of all, it's changing so fast, right? So the new, new capabilities coming from models happening almost on a daily basis, you know, the, the platform is evolving fast, uh, right? So I think there's, uh, you know, pretty clear trends now that folks want to build prototype quickly and see what works and then, you know, scale that out and, and, and put it in production. We're seeing clear trends in, uh, you know, no single model rules them all, you know, people reading with a collection of models, we'll say model cocktails, <laughs> that together form <laughs> something special, right? So, uh, this tends to be a popular uh, term here. Model cocktails. Model cocktails. Um, <laughs> And you know, like seeing open source models, like showing incredible capabilities, and, and, and you know, Amazon, you know, announcing Bedrock, you know, supporting uh, Llama 2 as one of their offerings. It's a great testament that hey, open source models have capabilities that people want, right? Um, and then the other thing I thought was interesting here that you know, clear infrastructure complexity, great infrastructure, like you know, talking about the workhorses there at the bottom, like with the GPUs and you know, accelerators underneath. Uh, we saw several announcements uh, this this yeah. event, right? So. Jensen on stage, you know, talking about the new instance types, but also DJX Cloud being offered in AWS. You know, Adam talking about Trainium 2, um, and which is all fantastic because bringing yeah. more resources for folks to use and build awesome applications, but also more infrastructure complexity to manage, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm a more horsepower, believer. more complexity with the AI workloads. Exactly. And, and the firm believer that we need to manage that and make it very easy for folks to build with. I think that's one of the. the I, I want to get into the. I want to get into the ease of use, John. We were talking about last night about ease of use and this waiver, around, but. You mentioned speed. You guys have just announced in one month two major things. You did image and text mm -hmm. uh, products just in one month. That's you shipped. Right. Yeah, we did, and we've seen people already building with it, which is really, really rewarding and awesome, right? So we we have uh, you know the the fastest implementations of Stable Diffusion uh, and Llama 2 and Mistral offerings on the market. You know, I'm not saying this just to brag; is that you know latency matters here because it's a better user experience, and also yeah. making it faster makes it cheaper. But most importantly, you know, making this for applications in production. Not for, you know, yeah. of course we want people to experience on the platform, but our yeah. end user here, folks putting in production <laughs> and showing that it works and stays up and, <laughs> and can you can run an enterprise application with well, it. It's right? been a so, couple of months since you've been yeah. on theCUBE and I know yeah. a lot's changed. What's your current business model now? I mean, then you got more tech, you yeah. got more capabilities. What are you guys doing now? What is OctoML's main focus from a pr product customer perspective? Absolutely, yeah, so people can run, tune and scale models and build generative AI applications with them. Right, so it's gen generative AI infrastructure for application builders, and the business model is simple, you pay for what you use. Right, you run a model, image, if you're an image gen, you're going to pay per image. If you're on a language model, you're going to pay per token uh, produced. Right, so very, very clear, transparent pricing. Um, and then and the you person that's use, buying the, or using the service are who? Platform engineers? Are they are application developers? Application, are they business? Application developers um, that are not machine learning engineers. 
right? So the folks that, again, ab abstracting complexity, right? So these are uh, developers that now they have done some experimentation with AI, they know what they want to yeah. build, and they want to put models in production. And they want to build their models, their own models. You want to choose models. Customers want choice. Like okay. this was a, a common <laughs> thing here. So like, you want to be able to choose the models that do um, not be dependent on any specific model and choose models yeah. that, that uh, have the capabilities that you need and have the right yeah, you know, They're going to be building, they're going to be developing. Right. This is that new layer where the feeding frenzy is going to come in. Yeah, they want exactly. to get into bedrock and, and test the long tail, the power law of, of, of models and see what happens. They'll experiment, maybe discover something, and then deploy it. Deploy and, and scale and then put in production with production quality service, like you yeah. know, the means of time, performance, yeah. uh, reliability. All you entrepreneurs out there, yeah, build some stuff and then we go to John for some cash. If you're an enterprise, show your <laughs> boss, get funding. Okay, John, entrepreneurs get some, get some experimentation. Now they want cash, they come to you, you're a VC. Not you're, just cash, he's full of insights <laughs> too, John. He's, yeah, he's good for insights. insights yeah. He's an yeah, added value investor. Um, so I didn't mean that as a compliment, and you are. Um, okay, now I want to get funding. What, the pace is fast. How do you decide what's good uh, when you look at a deal? Because um, I've seen some products out there that look really good on paper, but are just a hackathon. Weekend, weekend project that looks good, but is there enough differentiation there? Or uh, are valuations too high? So like, a, there's a lot of action happening. Uh, what's the filter now? Um, it's a speed game, it feels like. What's the funding look like for an entrepreneur out there? So I think there is now so much tooling, so much infrastructure, so many models available to founders now. That, and, and what could be a better environment to build in? And the question is, how can you make that good for you, not bad for you? It's by using it. Yeah. It's by using OctoML to get yeah. faster inference and better access, to, better access to silicon than anyone otherwise could. It's by using AWS to get you know, infinite elastic compute and things like zero ETL to pipe your data around. And all of this is really hinting at what we've said all along are the two key things that a great company needs to have to build a great product on top of technology like this. It's really powerful data, it's really powerful talent who is well leveraged, and it's better understanding of your customers than anyone else. And when we have these infrastructure, what that can do is it can actually get you more efficiency out of the talent that you do have, which is precious, yeah. which is rare and special. The technology is now making it easier to take the data that you may have, that you do have, and actually apply that. And, and the customer insight, that's the thing you got to you got to. I think with. that's a very key point, because I think, you know, if you say, okay, heavy lifting, I got OctoML as a service, transparent pricing, you know what you get, so you can mm -hmm. watch your budget, if you don't want to overdrive, if it goes viral, then you got to get the funding first, you pull that back. Yeah. But once you have that transparent price, you can focus on the product. The customer, it's the business logic. So you go to the customer and identify, that's an opportunity for an entrepreneur to actually compete and unseat an incumbent. If they right. can go to a customer saying, I've identified a workflow that I could get in there and leverage end to end mm -hmm. with data, potentially is an entry. So again, this brings up the question of, can the small guy come into a market and take territory? I absolutely. think the answer is absolutely we yes. We see it again and again and again. And you're, I think you're about to say something, but we, we see it again and again and again that yeah. if you can understand your customers better than other people do, yeah. and you can make the trends around you of, of speed and undifferentiated heavy lifting and faster performance and better generalizability of these and reasoning capability mm -hmm. of these models, if you can do all that and understand your customers yeah. better, you can absolutely yeah. beat Goliath. Yeah, absolutely, and I just want to add, I, you know, the only thing I had to add here is that there's so many pieces <laughs> ready to be composed into something really compelling and magical here that yeah. definitely understanding what your customer needs, but also showing what's possible with this new technology for customers that will be uh, pleasantly surprised yeah. and do that very yeah. quickly. Right, so that's, it's just extremely exciting to see how much resources you know, Luis, are available we, to do that we, We've today. taught in the past, obviously you've been a professor at the University of Washington, great, great school, great football program this year, <laughs> congratulations, but also computer science program's yeah. phenomenal. It feels like we're at an intersection, a flashpoint of like all the things that have been kind of hanging around the table that we want to have happen, smart, smart homes, cars, like stuff that's been supposedly supposed to happen over the past 20 years. It reminds me of the web, you know, the dot-com bubble at first, but all that stuff happened. We, we get food online, and stuff, the stuff that was supposed to happen didn't, but it happened over time. It was a slower boil. Now with the speed game, we're, we might see a flashpoint with this market, with this, this event showing us the, the Gen AI, that 
this might come together. The smart home, the edge, the um, smart car, the stuff that yeah. was kind of crawling along that might actually go faster now. It feels like we're at a point where there's enough compute, models as a service, you know, capital. If I, can, if I can offer a hot take, I would say that we haven't seen anything yet because, you know, go back a click or two in history and the App Store launches in 2008 or so, mid 2008, iOS 2.0. And we had a lot of apps. A lot of them were flashlight apps, a lot of them were simple games or direct ports from the web. And we did get apps that were native to mobile, that were mm -hmm. special, that, were, that showed us what was possible, but not for two years. And I would assert that you could have built Uber or Instagram in 2008, but it's not just a matter of the technical building blocks. The technical building blocks have to be there, and then lightning has to strike. And so yeah. what we now see is that the infrastructure is there and yeah. we're waiting for a lightning strike. It feels static in here, doesn't it? Like the lightning is going to hit. It does feel hit. static. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the What's that li what, is, what is the lightning? Is it timing? Is it just a talent? Is it the t just a moment in time? What is the lightning? strike look like is it you know what do you what do you see that i i think that what's coming to is just showing it's possible to automate things that only humans could do before like think about you know the velocity we're seeing applications that can do like automating uh producing a summary of a long email thread you don't have to read the whole thing this is actually working for meaningful progress we actually needed people to do that meaningfully in the past right so or you know automating you know generating graphical content out of text i mean this is something that was just in its infancy like 18 months ago and now yeah. it's not only showing uh, yeah. that it's possible, it's actually in production, a lot of really compelling use cases. It's happening so fast that uh, I'm, I'm with John that we haven't seen anything yet, yeah. but at the same time, what we've seen already is, is really, it's really, special. really cool. So that's yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> two years for the App Store, maybe um, two months in AI. But again, yeah. this brings up the shrinking of the acceleration, or, right. uh, or is it we start, or we at the pace of human speed at this point? Yeah, I, I think we're at the pace of human speed. Take the examples I just gave before. Uber, the lightning strike was Travis Kalkanik can't get a cab in Paris. And Airbnb, those guys needed, you a know, they were to trying to, <laughs> they needed, a, they had a, an air mattress. And so, um, for all the pace of innovation, there is, we're waiting for human inspiration. And there's yeah. a lot of people working yeah. on it, but yeah. there's some things that actually you can't rush. Yeah, there's some, there's some table stakes. I think the bedrock thing, choice and open always wins. We talked about that a little bit last night. Yeah, you guys had a founder dinner. Um, mm -hmm. Madrona had a great founder dinner. And it was interesting to hear the perspective and the demographics. I think we were the oldest ones in there. Um, <laughs> the young guns, I mean, if you're under, if you're an entrepreneur today and you're not excited about this environment, then, Maybe you shouldn't be in tech, because like, like yeah. this is the, probably the best ripe opportunity, and, but no one knows what's coming. They know it's going to be big. That's why I was asking about what, what is good look like and how do you differentiate, you know, I mean, think the web or, or app store, a flashlight app or a web page. Do you get funding for that? Well, some people did, that was the dot-com bubble, but <laughs> I think now we're more pragmatic about that, but you know, people are asking me, where's the white space? Where's the opportunity? And, and so I just, I mean, I just think it's everywhere, but that's literally, that be... literally, every type of application and many business and your human processes that are not even applications is in scope for this kind of technology. Right. You could probably contrive one that's not, and so I should say almost literally everything, but I can't contrive one. And so what that means is anything that, you know, founders ask, where should I focus? Where's the opportunity to focus? And I think that's the wrong question. I think the question is, what customers, what problem mm -hmm. do you know better than anybody else on this earth yeah. and have more passion for than anyone else on this earth? That is the thing. I totally agree with that. I think that's great advice. And also, the point about the customer, the access to customers now are a lot easier the path, or to get data about a customer, right. to say, okay, I can validate the problem that I know about, and I know what the answer looks like, let's get going and then use AI to help you get in there and then get back and get standing up some solutions and get the iteration, the latency of right. the answers that you need. Mm -hmm. So there's latency questions two ways. It's like latency of speed, speed of packets, and speed of creative, creative right, yeah. creation. I know latency can get confused. So think about latency as in how long do you wait and then velocity is how fast it's, you know, things are evolving, right, so. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. All right, so what's your take of the show here? Let's take a step back. Give me the, give me the summary of your perspective of reInvent 2023. 
Well, um, generative AI everywhere, <laughs> not surprising. Um, and you know, seeing you know interesting announcements from from um, um, AWS on an AWS uh, Amazon actually Amazon, not AWS Q. You know, was was <laughs> interesting. Um, also showing you know Bedrock coming together, mm -hmm. um, and and again like evolution of the infrastructure on the compute side is yeah. clearly clear that compute yeah. is top of mind for everyone here. Just, just look at yeah. the scale of compute yeah. that we're talking about uh, that was announced here today. It's just uh, several orders of magnitude uh, than, than we've, we've, we've seen yeah. in a while, right? So uh, one thing I want to bring up with people that I don't want to wake up the annoying professor in me, but one thing that's I think is interesting for people to internalize here is that every output that generative AI produces, like a word from a language model or an image from one of these, these uh, text image models, is like literally many orders of magnitude more than the, than the kind of compute requirements for any application we've ever had in human history. Right, so Explain I think it is a moment, it's a moment of being like the number of calculations required to produce a meaningful output for application of generative AI is orders of magnitude more than a typical application like a, a spreadsheet sitting in front of you or, so the, or the, a browser. So you have the, oh, the compute and, involved for that exactly. is more than people can even imagine. It's a moment to be grateful that computers are really, really <laughs> fast and are getting energy <laughs> efficient, you know, so. Well, that's a great point. I mean, the energy thing is the envelope now for the it, constraint. It, it constrains everything. Yeah, and John, what's your take? That's a good point about the magic of how fast that hardware and the speed of the processors and the, the system around it, it's like the, it's, just not, it's not just the chips, it's what's around it. Well, I think it really brings up why we're all here at reInvent, yeah. because this new wave of AI requires science and math that would not be possible without yeah. the cloud, without yeah. what happened That's here right. in 2012, yeah. what happened in Seattle in 2006, that level of compute and coordinating across many nodes would not have been possible. And now, back to yeah. 2023, when you see what Peter DeSantis announced in the infrastructure keynote, there's the best way to believe, the best way to know for sure that Amazon believes in AI is the way Amazon is consuming AI. For example, to make the databases more scalable and more right. efficient. It's a uh, it, it's really inspiring and deep, deep investment that's happening. Yeah, and there, and it's meaningful. Yeah. It's, it has a direct application to what people mm -hmm. need. Right. Just get that lightning strike going back to the spark. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the cab in Paris, start Uber, or I want to solve this problem that I see that no one else has solved. You right. know, as Steve Jobs said, you know, half the stuff was invented by people no smarter than you, right? That's mm -hmm. the famous line from Steve Jobs. So people can start solving the problems. Right. You don't have to be a machine learning engineer to go build apps with un un yeah. unprecedented compute available for you. Yeah, and I'll add one more thing so that you might not even need to be a regular, typical application developer because now there's a lot of really meaningful ways for you to actually start building experiences without writing code. I mean, natural language becoming, no, you've been hearing this more and more, <laughs> but there's something natural language programming has been a dream of computer scientists yeah. for a long time, and it's finally becoming, you know, uh, it's finally being realized in a way that's very different than computer scientists have thought, and it just feels magical even to them. Yeah. Right, so I, mean, I, I love more having people can build stuff. More people that can build stuff. More creativity that can be unlocked very quickly. Yeah, yeah. More experiences, and that's yeah. where the velocity. It's a wealth from. creation. It's a, it's a it's a wealth creation. That's just not money, but assets, uh, right. society benefit. Love having the professor on. Master class <laughs> here on the Always love having you on. Special time. Last minute we got. Give a plug for the company and what you're looking for. An investment. We'll start with the company. What's what do you got going on? Who are you hiring? You looking to hire? What's Thank going you. on? Put the, put the yeah. plug in. Uh, no, we're we're definitely in a row. So come come talk to AI or product to run to then scale your generative AI models. We're a generative AI infrastructure for application builders. Mm -hmm. uh, we make it very easy for folks to go and build the model cocktails that solve the problems that they want uh, and, and have the models they can choose, so. We want to hear from you anywhere up or down the AI stack if you know your customers better than anyone else on the planet. And you're writing yeah. big fat checks or series C, A, what's the range of checks that you write? Madrona will write a check anywhere from the very first check through series C. Great, great stuff. Great firm. Congratulations, Octomel. Continue. Thank Can't you. wait to get Thanks, the update John. next. Always great to have you guys. Great to see you guys last night in the team. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. All right, we're breaking it down. A lot of opportunities to get funding if you're a startup, but, and also but if you're a builder, the tools are available, unprecedented resource available to get that spark of creativity to create value for your company or a startup. Perfect time to be out there. Of course, theCUBE's got all the action. More coverage after this short break. Back to the studio in Palo Alto.